Well, um, here's, here's, here's the patient. Good evening. Good evening. Now, uh, can you first of all tell me a little bit about what you felt like before this operation was done? Well, I was very, very de depressed and I used to think I was going to die, I mean. Thought you were going to die? Yes. Why? Sir. Well, I used to think that I got heart trouble. And Thought you got heart trouble? I was very depressed and frightened to move. Did you go out of the house at all? I did used to go out, sure, but out in the bath chair and I, the bath. I was frightened to walk. And there was nothing wrong with his heart? Nothing wrong with his heart, no, 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 it was just pure panic about his heart. Uh, and Absolutely, what about... Absolutely, yes. He was really... Yes, sir, he was well. really frightened of himself. And what about now? Oh, I'm all right now, sir, I'm A1. I... You working? Yes, sir. Have you been working since the operation? Oh, yes, sir, I've been do? Re regular work, bricklaying, sir. Bricklaying? Yes, sir. Really. Can, you, can you do really hard work now? You remember how you used to pant about the place? Oh, yes, sir, I do hard work now. In fact, I've done a bit of navvying, trench digging, and yes. everything in general. But how is your heart? Oh, I don't get no trouble with it, sir. No, no. Do you think it's going to die now? No, no. no. Yes. But now, the critical thing is, what do you think uh, about your husband? Is he changed at all as a result of the operation? Not a scrap, sir. Since uh, before the illness, he's just as good now he's as he was then? He's just as good, yes, sir. He's not a different person mm, anyway? Not a bit. Now, sure listen, that. now, listen, do you remember that I did warn you about the possibility of these after effects? Yes, And do did. tell these people, are there any bad effects? No, must... None whatever. Well, now, would he have come and appeared before this audience? <laughs> well, I don't think he would. <laughs> In other words, I think he is a little more free and easy, isn't he? Uh, yes, sir. I mean, yesterday, yes, sir. he's not rude to you or anything. Not way. a scrap, not yeah. a scrap. And he's got the same feelings he had Absolutely. for you. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, now, that is a, a, a remarkably good result, mm. isn't it? Wouldn't you say that was well, I don't, exceptional? Well, I don't think it's particularly remarkable. You see, I think one can get these sort of results if one can only choose the right sort of patient for the operation. I mean, sometimes we do have to operate on unsuitable patients. And I think the key to this is this. <coughs> this patient had a very good previous personality. Uh, he'd had a good work record all the time until he got ill, and even when he was ill for four years, yet his per general personality was very well preserved at the end. I mean, he had these terrible fears, but he was still preserved. And what's more, he did have one of these new modified operations which the previous uh, speaker was talking about. Now, we have had an awful lot of letters. I've got one here from people who've had leucotomy who are extremely grateful for it. Funnily enough, they're much more grateful than those who had ECT. <laughs> I know, it's, it's a very funny thing, this, but I think the reason is this. One probably gets so much gratitude from these people, and I know this is quite true, because they've been ill so long. You see, really, we don't rush this operation straight away, and if yes. they've been ill, say, for three or four, five, six, seven years, they are more grateful when they're better. The other point is this. The ones that do best of the operation are those who show the greatest amount of anxiety, agitation, and what we call tortured self-concern about their illness. Yes. That patient was terribly concerned about himself. And, of course, again, when they're better, they're extremely pleased. I suppose some of the less good results are, in fact, better than the miserable state that they were in before they ever had the operation. Well, it's, it's a matter. I mean, sometimes you can't get a really good result, but it's better yes. than nothing, so to speak. Yes. And, of course, other people stay in mental hospitals, but at least they're relieved of this terrible suffering Not which they had before. Well, now, one other form of treatment we did see a little bit of in the first program, and that was uh, somebody having ether dripped over their face with a mask. Uh, so yes, you, you, you mean this uh, drug ab reaction treatment? Drug ab reaction, yes. Well, now, we no, have got somebody again here, a colleague of mine, who's done a lot of work in this during the war, and I think he'll be very interested to talk about it. He's going to show us a film. Good. Well, well, over to you. Uh, most people agree that uh, <coughs> getting rid of st uh, steam or the blowing off of emotion is a beneficial thing. Uh, various drugs have been introduced in recent years uh, in order to help this along. Uh, and they include injections of pentothal or, or sodium amytal or inhalations of ether. A uh, drug abreaction is a, a method of treatment uh, which has been introduced for patients who have developed neurosis uh, following shattering or terrifying experiences. Yes. Uh, the type of person uh, who uh, may show this form of neurosis is one who tends to black out or lose his memory uh, in, in the midst of acute stress or strain, or, or the type of person who inhibits, totally inhibits his emotions or, although his memory for the instant remains intact. Could you give us an example? The, um, well, we, we have an example uh, in a film uh, yeah. uh, that we're showing this evening. Uh, this is uh, a film of a regular soldier and a sergeant instructor in tanks uh, who went through uh, the, uh, the Western Desert battles quite successfully until the Battle of Alamein. Uh, there, uh, his tank was hit, and from that time, he became ill, he was unable to carry on, uh, was depressed, and um, 
went on in this state uh, up till 1950, when he was first admitted into hospital and had his first treatment by abreaction. Well, he had a succession of treatments in this way and improved. He was able to go back to work uh, and carry on a reasonably normal life. Uh, unfortunately, he has just relapsed, and I gave him a treatment last week, which we have now uh, filmed. Uh, you will notice uh, at the beginning of the film, uh, the, uh, I'm attempting to arouse the patient's emotions. Well, let's see. He's shouting on blind. He's shouting he's blind. Yes. You can see him now, shouting he's blind. Well, there's black in the tank. Everything's, Everything's black now. Black. Everything's going dark. You're in this tank and you're trying to get, get out now. You're trying to get out of the tank. We'll get out the top. Well, get out of the tank now. I'm on the top, I'm going to jump. What can you see now? There's a snake movement. There's a snake there. There's you, a snake. What are you going to do? The thing's been blown up. It's blown up and you're yes. trying to get out. You're completely trapped now. You yes, can't sir. get out. Yes, sir. What are you going to do about I'll it now? I'll get out. I'll go to jump and there's a snake moving. Well, come on, jump now. And it stops me from jumping. Jump. You're going to jump yes, now. It stops me from jumping. The You're going to shout for some help now. The driver shouts for help. He said, I'm blind, I'm blind. He's you can hear him shouting he's blind. I'm blind. And you're trying to get out of this tank now. Yes, and I, I started jumping the snake. Well, come on, jump now. I can't jump, there's a snake there. Well, get some help. <laughs> 